Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Isaac Schultz. I am the builder of a Sonics two-place airplane. I, we got here Saturday. I've been enjoying the show the entire week. Uh, we just got back from the Sonics kind of foundation gathering and Sorry about that. Anyway, my talk is going to be all about the challenges that I face with being a teenager and building an airplane. Like I said, my name is Isaac Schultz. I'm currently 16. I've grown up all around aviation. I took my first flight when I was 11 days old. <laughs> I've grown up going to EAA meetings, eating donuts and cookies, hearing cool flying stories. I'm a student pilot. I'm, I'm working on getting my private pilot when I'm 17. I am an Eagle Scout, I've been loving scouts, and I'm a competitive gymnast, which takes a lot of time training in the gym and a lot of weekends going away to competitions. So I'm going to be talking about some of the challenges that I face, I'm trying to divide up my time scrounge up money for the project, and deal with the lack of experience I have for only being 16. First of all, what is a Sonics? Some of you know it well, some of you have never seen a Sonics. The brief overview is a two-place, all-aluminum, home-built airplane. Uh, it's a very great bang for the buck low price airplane. It is aerobatic to positive 6 Gs, negative 4. It is a beautiful little plane. My kit is number 1612. It's got the standard landing gear configuration, tail dragger, standard tail, with the normal tail. The short ailerons and oh, 80 horsepower Aero V engine powering it. Can't really do anything about that. That's the fun of their adventure. Back on track now. I got my kit around April last year. Uh, I'll be going more into the story about that later on. The first challenge I faced was building on a shoestring budget. Uh, most people think of airplanes as being huge, expensive, billion dollar jet. A Sonics is a good option, but it's still almost $40,000 for the airframe, and by the time you get instruments and power plant, you're looking at a pretty hefty price tag. One that a teenager can't exactly put through standard needs. My low budget was a challenge that I overcame uh, and I'm still working to overcome by make, working on making money in any way possible. At any point, I've got a number of projects I'm working on, uh, job avenues I'm pursuing. We just moved to a new location, so a lot of my old connections are cut off, but I'm starting to reintegrate into the community and look for work. Just a few of my jobs that have worked out well in the past are mowing the neighbor's lawns every week, get in there, mow, rake, take care of the whole deal, working for fellow chapter members, uh, helping them on their property or with their planes. As I said, I'm a competitive gymnast, and I've been in the gym since I was eight years old. 
So I know a lot about gymnastics, which helps translate over to coaching. And sticking around the gym so much, I've got time that what would otherwise just be me sitting, sitting and twiddling my thumbs. So I picked up coaching as a great way to make money and really fun. I also cleaned the gym, uh, all those sweaty mats, and detailed cars around the neighborhood. Unfortunately, it's true. So you got to put yourself out there, ask all the questions, uh, and things aren't going to just fall into my lap. I had to constantly be going out and looking for deals. That brings me to my Sonics kit and how that came up. So we're going to go back to Oshkosh, 2016. It was about the middle of the week where it is now, and me and my aviation buddies were sitting in the McDonald's eating breakfast. I'm on my iPod using the free Wi-Fi to check email, and the Sonics Builder Forum showed an airplane for sale. But yeah, that'd be really cool. A partially started kit. I'm going to send an offer. So I typed up my email. I have $300. I can get $400 in the next two months. And I fired it away and went to the show, eager to check my email again for a response. Well, you can't really buy a whole airplane on $300. But I got a response from the seller. They were interested in offloading the project and uh, I got organized. I laid out a plan for how I was going to make my money. I stepped up all of my jobs. I set up a GoFundMe online so I could accept donations. And I started a website uh, documenting all of my progress so people could check it out. I worked on that for six months or so. Earned a bunch of money, see if it matched up with my goal. I was trying to get $7,000 to offer for the kit. In March, on my birthday, I got an email from an unrelated person. It was a science builder who had been building, but the kit just ended up sitting for almost two years without being worked on. He kind of ran out of steam and he was looking to move on to other things. 
through my website and me talking about this all the time, he learned that I was looking for a kit. So he approached me with an email and said that uh, I could get the kit for a great price. I just had to get from Mississippi to Kansas City to go pick up the kit before the end of April. I was $80 away at that point from the price tag he set on it. So I looked at it, deal. Finished mowing some lawns, got that $80. We got a trailer from a hangar mate, and we were off on the road to pick up my kit. There we are with it all loaded up. And this just goes to show, if you're all alone and not talking to anybody, you're just doing your own thing, laser focused on your stuff, no one's really going to notice you. You got to network and talk to people, and that helped me tremendously with lining up deals. Since then, I've got my V from somewhere at the airport. Got a great deal on that. I was just talking to him in front of his plane and noticed him in the back of his hangar and started asking about it. And then one last thing you always have to remember, you want to make a fair deal. You don't want to be ripping people off. You want both people to be happy. Not going to get me a good reputation if I swipe everything for someone. So some of you are familiar with this. This is the plant tree for all of the different plant sheets on Sonics. That is a lot. All of those little boxes are a whole sheet of plans with their own processes, dozens of parts to be built and assembled on each sheet. It's overwhelming when you look at it. And you look at it and think, oh, I can never do this. But, uh, just like with the fundraising, I got organized. something productive every second. I, and if something falls through, I don't have time wasted just sitting around doing nothing. I've got tons of stuff for my time. Always got, always got camp outs on the weekends. Building every time I can get. I, another thing, getting organized. I drew up a day I wake up, get an hour or so of building in, and then breakfast and move on to the rest of the day's things. Uh, flying, I'm still a student pilot, so I'm learning to fly still, and it's always fun to fly RC or full size. Gymnastics sucks up a lot of time, but anyways, and school. I have a great asset that I'm homeschooled. My, my family's military, so being in a normal school, you get uprooted every other year. It doesn't work real well. Homeschooling allows you to be much more flexible. You can squeeze in a little building here, stay up late and finish your math work there. And I've got a spiral bound notebook, well, several of these, all scattered around the house in my room. And when I get up, try and write down what I want to accomplish for the day. It helps me stay productive and get something done every day. 
So here's just some of the things that I do. There's the night of my board of review, flying some RC planes, building a gymnastics competition, and flying in our family's Challenger. Back to that doing something every day. A dusty kit is the most dangerous thing in home building. You have to get after it every single day, even if you just go out, look at it, uh, take five minutes to review the plans, maybe even just think about what the next process is while you're laying in bed before you go to sleep. I know it well because my kit came from someone who stalled out and lost momentum on his kit. So it's very close in what I do that I don't want to lose momentum, stall, and fall off on working. So here's kind of the process of a blog post. Uh, first to actually do the operation and do the building. Snapping pictures with my iPod as much as possible. Then I get all the pictures in, write an outline on a napkin or a piece of paper, and write all about what I did to accomplish that operation. Give it a day to uh, sink in, come back, edit it, and post it. Another key thing in time is using the right tool for the right job. Using a hand riveter would take forever to finish a plane. You can see RVs for that. I have a pneumatic riveter. I love that thing to death. And there's many other examples of time-saving tools like that. I, a lot of that comes from experience and just knowing what to use. So some of the mentors in aviation have helped me learn that. When I started this project, I knew just the basics of building. My dad built two Sonics's, and I've been around toddling through the hangar, picking up rivet stems, playing with them, uh, digging through the scrap bin to find interesting pieces of metal. But I hadn't really been building. I learned a tremendous amount, even just in the first few months. One thing that particularly sticks out is I was just starting to drill holes and it was taking forever. I didn't know why it was taking so long. Well, it turns out my drill bit was extremely dull and that's one of the things you just don't know until you know it. My dad noticed that it was taking a while and handed me a new drill bit. Boom, it was going way faster. You don't have to sit there for five minutes while it burns a hole through the metal. Another way of using the right tool is mentally preparing yourself for the task. Uh, read ahead in the plans is really helpful to me. Make sure that I have everything uh, hardware-wise, because there's nothing worse than flipping to a new page of the plans, looking at it, oh no, I don't have that, I'm out of these and you have to wait while you order it from Aircraft Spruce, or you have to fabricate that new part uh, from stock that you don't have. So mentally going through and preparing yourself for the task really helps me. Like I said, 
I came into this knowing very little about building. I'd been around it, but I hadn't done it before. And the aviation community is just brimming full with mentors who are ready to share their experience with you. You just have to ask. My local EAA chapter was a huge asset in building. I, there's a ton of knowledge held in these people's heads. You have to be careful about who you listen to and use your own brain too. Do your own research. But there's nothing like having someone who can show you how to use a bending brake. Someone who has access to the community college's workshop. Someone who works in avionics and has schools and schools of every kind of wire imaginable that you can use. Every meeting, I get a monthly dose of encouragement as I share my build update and listen to everyone else with their projects. And unexpected donations to my project, people who have tools or pieces of hardware or give me a donation to help with the funding for bigger purchases. If you don't know, find someone who does. I don't have to do this by myself. If I did, the airplane would be much longer to build because I frantically double check and triple check everything. I'm surrounded by great resources. My dad, having built two Sonics before, is very knowledgeable on how they go together and some of the little things that you pick up from the second or third time through. Some of the things I learned were the general best practices, uh, edge distance, how to align your hole perfectly using a center punch, drilling titanium, Chairs are for sitting in, like you guys are doing, not for storing parts. So many times, finish an assembly, set it in the chair, and I turn around to see my dad, and the assembly's on the ground. So after the 10th or 20th time, I eventually learned to keep the tools and uh, assemblies on the workbench, not the chair. And then the biggest mistakes happened when you kind of get on a roll. All right, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do this, this, and not really looking at the plans. I already know how this is going. Finish it up. Well, that doesn't look right. <coughs> The plans only work if you read them correctly. The Sonic's plans are very well made in Syria, but they do have their own sort of lingo that I had to learn. I spent hours with the plans when I first got the kit, looking through, uh, my dad helping me understand what all the different pieces meant, and just reading them. The Sonics community has a forum online with tons of people who can uh, help provide a big wealth of knowledge. If you have questions, you can reach out on there. And of course, uh, lining up deals for various Sonics services. You can't exactly return to the factory. Uh, or maybe you can get them a little bit cheaper from someone who bought it and never ended up using it. Here's my dad and I working on drilling the turtle deck. 
Like I said, the biggest errors come from thinking, all right, I got this, don't need to check the plans, I know exactly how this is going. It always helps to take a look at the plans first, collect my thoughts, say out loud what I'm going to do, and really think through how I'm going to do the next building on this. Podcasts and music are great, listen to them, but sometimes you got to turn it off for uh, precise things and focusing out. I'm building my projects just in the garage. Uh, the door open so you don't die if you made it in down in Mississippi. Also true in Kansas City, the new home. And people will be walking by on the neighborhood and look at, oh, what is that? Some sort of a boat? It's always great to, like, hey, come on over, you want to see? Explain, well, this is an airplane. See, these are the wings, this is where you sit. And you can pull those people in and get the age a better reputation, just be inclusive. You can even put them to work riveting. I had a friend come over once, and I put them to work all night long. Helped me rivet up the right wing. Looking back on my project so far, some of the biggest things I learned I really, I, when I first started, I didn't know what a number 40 drill bit was, or a number 30. I didn't know how they were different other than one was probably bigger. Now I can look at a drill bit and pretty accurately feel it. Okay, that's number 40. I'm going to use this for a pilot drill to drill the initial hole. And that same sort of awareness and familiarity has become true with a lot of the different tools that I use. Another thing is the aviation community is just looking for more people. I, they're not interested in pushing you down. We help, we bend down, pull people up into the community. It's very inclusive. And a lot of people look at it like it's an own little group. And say at my gymnastics team, I'll say, oh, you guys should come to the Young Eagles Fly. We're giving free rides out all day long. Ah, uh, you're, you're lying. You don't give free rides to airplanes. Airplanes are for rich people. It's like, no, you really got to come. There's pancakes, too. And one person comes, looking to prove me wrong, gets a belly full of pancakes, and goes up in a great looking flag. So, are completed as long as you keep making progress. Come back to that a little bit of work every day. If I don't work Monday, then it's a little bit easier to say, well, I've got things to do, I'm busy, and not work Tuesday. And then it's even easier to miss Wednesday. It's important that I keep working every day, even if I just do a little bit. And eventually it'll get done. I share your story because others are interested. That's going back to uh, laser focus on your own thing. You don't talk to anybody. You don't even come to chapter meetings. You just sit in your little corner of the world and stay doing your own thing. It's 
way better to talk to people. Uh, you never know what someone could offer until you get up and talk to them. And through the random course of the conversation, you might find out that they have uh, an ROV sitting in the back of their hangar. And they're not looking to do anything with it, so you can get a stellar deal on it. to maintain a high level of excellence. Uh, if a part just, just doesn't look right, it doesn't seem like it's fitting perfect the way I want it to, that's why the scrap bin's there. Throw it in the scrap bin, remake it, and make it perfect. Uh, are two incarnations of a part that I made for the Ford fuselage that I just wasn't happy with how it was sitting. It didn't seem right. I was fiddling with it, fiddling with it. And I learned uh, kind of to step back and make sure to keep a big picture view. Because the initial part actually fit right. I just wasn't using it properly. So I came back to the plans, looked at it. Oh yeah, that's how it goes. And of course, if you want it bad enough, no matter what, I'll find a way to make it happen. There's all these challenges of low cost or low budget. Uh, time being filled with a whole bunch of stuff, school, gymnastics, Boy Scouts trying to get some flights in. And not really knowing what I was doing at first. But I wanted that, and I overcome a lot of that. I'm still working on some. I work on the project every day. And, um, hold on. I work on it every day, and I'm having a blast with it. So looking ahead, currently, my project has got the wings very close to complete. I'm not working on it currently. The tail is done sitting in the hangar. The control surfaces are all done sitting against the wall. The engine is assembled and very close to being ready to mount on the engine mount, which is assembled on the fuselage. The fuselage is on the gear, and a short-term focus is going to be the firewall forward and wing rigging and hooking up some of the controls. After that, I'm going to work on my instrument panel, glare shield, a custom tilt back canopy, and my interior pieces. Uh, looking at everything, I should be flying in nine months to a year. My biggest worry is staying on top of my schedule as the school year launches up again. I, I gotta keep up on all of my various projects and do schoolwork and still pass tests. The next biggest challenge is gonna be funding the remainder of my projects. I've got a lot done, but I still have a lot to go. Just at the show, I picked up uh, some instruments my EFIS with an EIS that I can display engine data on the EFIS. And I got a show special on that. I'm really excited for getting into my flight training in the new location and coming forward, forward towards my solo and check ride and then getting my plane up in the air.
more info, you can go to my blog. I, my business cards right there have a link to the blog on them, and a QR code you can scan using your phone. My GoFundMe, if you want to donate, uh, but it's easier just to do it in cash. GoFundMe takes a little cut of everything you donate. The Sonics Builder Forum, uh, that's a great asset. Sonics Aircraft, uh, it's the factory's webpage. And my personal email, you can hit me up with any questions you have. So, we've got a few minutes for questions. Sorry, can you say that again? I just happened to know someone. <laughs> I go flying in the Sonics uh, with my dad all the time. Uh, I'm working on a lot of maneuvers trying to get a really good stick and rudder air sense and skills. I've been flying in a Challenger, our two seat high wing pusher prop for going on four years now, and that is a blast. Uh, if you're planning on doing like a group build project with teenagers, is that what you're getting at? A couple of people on hand to help, a lot of donuts, and YouTube videos that you can send them to so they can look at stuff. You gotta make sure that they want to be there. If they're just, I don't know, hanging out or uh, doing it to be with friends, then they're not gonna be as focused. But if you get some people who are really interested and you let them know that you're gonna help them, they are gonna get to completion. Uh, as long as they keep on going, they're going to have a plane, then they'll do it. my website and uh, really getting my story out there, the people that I worked with and bought from gave me really good deals as kind of a donation for what they could do. I, I got the Airframe kit for 5000 and I called it back. And I got the Aero V for 2500 with the whole prop forward. Yes. I. Uh, there's probably a thousand or fifteen hundred in parts that I had to buy and things that I had to order. Yeah. Uh, my instruments, uh, right now I'm just looking for a transponder and an intercom, right? Like a 
I'm looking for a transponder and a com radio. Uh, and that'll round out my panel. So probably 2,000, 3,000 to finish out all of that and the other things I'm going to need to order. And then I'm looking at doing a vinyl wrap, which is 800 to about. So I started building, and the question was, why did I decide to start building Sonics? My dad had a Sonic, and I was always going to find it. I'm in love with the design. It is a great airplane. The controls are very light and sporty, responsive. I really like it. Uh, it fits my mission of just flying around and enjoying flying. Uh, and then what really kicked off me wanting to build my own plane, I think was that email that I got about the kit for sale two years ago at Oshkosh. That's when I really started thinking, I could do this now. Before that, I had been thinking, often the far, far future, I could maybe build an airplane after college and after I got a job. Isaac, how does your mother feel about having another Sonic and a Sonic car in your family? She really wishes that she could park in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> We actually moved to a house with a three-car garage, so we've got one slot for my project, one slot for the junk we keep in the garage, and one slot that she gets to park in the garage for the first time in 11 years. Which is good, because it snows in Kansas City. We were a bit spoiled in Mississippi. We had about a week of winter there. There's a huge market of people who bought kits and just ran out of steam on them and they end up sitting. So if you can find that deal and sniff out those people, you can get great deals. Uh, like you're saying, it's not unattainable. Fly aerobatics? Oh yeah. <laughs> what does Dad think about that? <laughs> yeah, <it's my> <laughs> <laughs> you ever have a question where you're really not sure of like the uh contact silence or any uh advice if you have a chance to call the defense support? I've got a great resource. My dad knows a lot. 
So most things he can answer. And you know, looking fun at Kerry is fun and all, but he's got to get some sleep sometime. <laughs>